Though Satan should buffet, though trial should come, let this blessed assurance control that. Attention, please. The We're going to ask the funeral directors to come as we prepare to begin the homegoing service for our dear sister Long. I come. While they are making preparations, once again, we ask that you would help us in our efforts at social distancing. Uh, everywhere you see a green dot is a seat you can occupy. If you are currently not sitting on a green dot, we ask that you would find one. Uh, that way we can help keep everyone safe. That all right? Yeah. Amen. Uh, so far, it looks like everybody is where they're supposed to be, but uh, please, please keep that in mind. Thank you. Good 
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Mayfield Church of Christ. And first of all, I'd like to say thank each of you for coming today, sharing in the celebration of our dear sister, Long. She would be smiling right now saying, hey, this is really, really wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> At this time, we're going to start our program. And we're going to start with Brother Bobby Dean. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. God bless you all. Bless your family. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty and most magnificent, glorious, kind, loving, powerful, and understanding Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, Father. Father, we ask for your blessings and your forgiveness of our sins and our trespasses, Father. Father, we ask you to watch over this family in their time of grief, Father, and that you would help us, Father, to do things always that are pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, Father. Put thy hands upon us and thy Holy Spirit within us, Father, and guide us in the way you would have us to go, Father. Help us to glorify your holy name, Father, even in this time, Father, where we may miss a loved one and a friend. We know that that friend died in the Lord. So that's a glory, hallelujah, and a shouting moment. Praise your holy name for Jesus that made it possible. So bless us and be with us always and bless this homegoing ceremony that may be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 David Penn, he's the minister at Robin Street Church of Christ. Brother Penn. We'd like to extend our condolences to the family during this time of bereavement. We want you to know that you are certainly in our prayers and in our conversation with the master. The scripture text which has been selected is taken from the Old Testament as well as the New Testament the Old Testament passage is in Psalms 26, verses 1 and 2. This is a psalm of David during one of the trials of his life. Everybody knows we all have trials. And if we keep getting up, we're going to have some more. David says, judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. The New Testament text is taken from the Gospel according to John, 
verses 1 through 3. This was written the night before Jesus was apprehended and crucified what we call during the Last Supper. And he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. For where I am there, ye may be also. Such is the reading from the Old Testament and the New Testament from God's Holy Word Divine. Let's see, Sister Milton said, sing some of the little upbeat, so. Build a mansion robe and crown, how is that? The ring's gonna get her mansion robe and crown. Will that be all right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna trade my earthly home for a better one, bright and fair. Christ left to prepare a mansion for children in the air. I'll join him in that land where tears no sorrow can be found when I receive my mansion, mansion, robe, and I want a mansion, a robe, and a crown. There, peace and love will always abound. Let me, Lord, your throne surround. Now the weather there is always fair. There's sunshine day and night. No cold, no rain will fall there. For the sun shines ever bright. I'll need no heavy garment. I'll just wrap my robe around. When I receive my mansion, mansion robe, I want a mansion. Robe and crown, and now my head is bowed and blooded now from the work that I try to do. But one day I'll be rewarded with a crown so bright and new. I'll wear a smile so bright, for there'll be no cause for a frown when I receive my mansion. mansion. Robe and crown. Mansion, robe and a crown in glory there. Peace and love will always abound, Lord. Let me, Lord, your throne surround. Lord, please reserve my mansion, mansion, robe and crown. Yeah. 
next, we will have the obituary reading by one of her favorite nieces, mm -hmm. Sister Katrina. Come on up. <laughs> this is our glamour girl. <laughs> First, I would like to just thank everyone for coming out today um, with all the different conditions that are going on in the world. So we really appreciate all of your efforts and your time today. Uh, <clears throat> we would also like to thank the Maple Avenue Church of Christ family, as well as the Alden Town uh, members there for taking care of my aunt. I call her lovely uh, Queenie. That you all know her as Reen, but she was your highness to me because <laughs> when she moved in with my grandmother, she would make these requests and then just sit back and wait for you to carry it out. <laughs> so thank you very kindly. Um, I'm also thankful that <clears throat> I had such a great example. I said this at my grandmother's funeral also, but having such a great example of how a woman um, should be taking care of her family <clears throat> and her loving kindness to all and her great sense of humor because she was a hoot. <laughs> so I will read the obituary to keep with the timing. Uh, Miss Loreen, lovely known as Reen, was born on October 27th, 1948. She departed this life on October 8th, 2020. Loreen was born in Chicago, Illinois to the late Mr. Willie and Miss Johnny May. That's Ma. Yeah. Uh, Lorraine is also preceded in death by her son, my cousin, Nathan Long. We know him as Tati, um, and her brother, Robert Young, and both parents. Lorraine was the fourth of five children. Lorraine ten attended May mm -mm, Malcolm X College in Chicago. She earned her associate's and her bachelor's degree in business administration. As a youth, Lorraine loved to uh, crochet. She also enjoyed reading and absolutely loved to travel with our Aunt Titi. They enjoyed international travel and visited many places such as Paris, Italy, China, and Germany. Reen especially loved sharing uh, stories of how the men in Italy would greet American women. I'll save that for later. Uh, her favorite saying was, if I never travel again, I have been everywhere. Lorraine yeah. worked at the University of Chicago as a manager of the secretarial staff. She was dedicated to her team and was well respected. Lorraine's reputation and dedication followed her throughout her entire career. She retired after 25 years of service because of health concerns. Lorraine was baptized into the body of Christ in 1991 at the Maypole Avenue Church of Christ under the leadership of the late brother Nathaniel Dean. Lorraine enjoyed learning and studying her Bible with her sister, Sister Knowlton, that would be Des. She was always willing to help and share with others. She loved Wednesday night Bible class and asking questions to learn more about the Bible. Lorraine's family will always hold her love in our hearts and forever cherish her memories. She leaves to mourn her passing two sisters, Alabama, Jesse of Chicago, Illinois, Desiree Knowlton of Forest Park, Illinois, one brother, Tyrone Young of Chicago, Illinois, her grandchildren, Nathan Long Jr., uh, and his wife, Kiana, I hope I pronounced that correctly, um, Deontay Lavelle Brown, Ariel Bryant, and a host of great grandchildren, nieces, nephews, aunts, cousins, and friends. Reen had a host of beautiful and caring godmothers and god sisters who loved her dearly as their own. Mrs. Bonnie Beck, Sister Banks, Miss Azelle Gordon, her god sisters Roche Johnson, Yolanda Banks, hey, uh, Geraldine Steinis, Irma McCory, and Linda Hawkins. Two God brothers, Brother Henry Oaks, 
and Carlton Strong and the staff at, again, Alden Town Manor and her Church to Christ family. And again, I, you know, thank you all for coming out. Um, I'll just end by saying when I look back over my life, I, I've truly been blessed. I said this at my grandmother's services as well uh, today because she was such an amazing woman and she had, she just had a very kind heart and kind spirit. So we will miss her and thank you all. Resolution and acknowledgments. I would like to acknowledge first, we have resolutions from Monroe Street Church of Christ, where Brother Turner is the minister. We have a resolution from Brother and Sister Thomas, and the, he's the evangelist at uh, the system at the Sheldon Height. And we have a resolution from Maypole, which I shall read. Um, I would usually ask the people to stand, but today, since we have older people, I'm not going to ask you to stand. Just raise your hand that you're from Maypole. Okay, Maypole Church of Christ. As we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to the purpose, Romans 8, 28, be it resolved that the Maple Avenue Church of Christ sadly joins the family of our sister in Christ in their hour of bereavement. And we want you to know that even though we search Webster Dictionary for any word of comfort, there were none. But we know a God who cares, who is more than able, who is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let it be known this day that even though we cannot adequately express our sentiments to you, we know that God's word never fail, and that just as he provides rest for your dear loved one, he will not leave you alone, not comfortless. We pray that you will focus on God's promises. I am with you. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you and I will uphold you. And so, it is our prayer and desire that your family knows that we stand ready, just a phone call away, to support and to comfort you, to lend a helping hand, but not during your bereavement time, but whenever you need us in your lonely and sad hours, you can depend on us. We will take comfort knowing that one day God will not only wipe away all tears, but that death, sorrow, crying, and pain will cease, and things will be made new, and you will see her again. Humbly submitted this day, October 17, 2020, the Maypole Church of Christ, Evangelist Gerald Walker, Senior Minister. Okay, next I'm going to do acknowledgments. Um, the family of Lorraine Walker would like to thank you sincerely for your love and kindness during this time of our great loss and bereavement. We acknowledge you with heartfelt appreciation the many comforting messages, prayers, cards, and other expression of kindness and concern. Your comfort has extended to our family. Each act of kindness will be acknowledged at a later date. Life is but a stepping, life is but a stepping place. 
Life is but a stepping place, a pause in what's to be, a resting place along the road to sweet eternity. We all have different journeys, different paths along the way. We all were meant to learn some things, but never meant to stay. Our destination is a place for greater than we know. For some, the journey is quicker than we know. For some, the journey is slow. And when the journey finally ends, we'll claim a great reward and find our everlasting place together with the Lord. Okay, next we will have remarks. And first, I'm going to ask Sister Banks to come up. Sister Banks is our sister that's always ready to give remarks about everybody at Maypole. Okay, thank you. Sister Banks, will you read? Use this mic, please. I like to say, it's not a pleasure to stand here, but I'm glad I'm able to stand here and to say a few words over. I would say she's my goddaughter too, because some years ago, over 30 some years ago, my husband picked him three daughters. Now he did the picking. I had the boys, so he did picking the girls. He picked Desiree as his oldest, Pearl and Michelle Thomas. Pearlie Cox, Michelle Thomas. And then Roche came along. She said, I want to be a daughter too. I say, fine. So I have four daughters. And a lot of them say, I want to call your mama. Well, I can say be called mama because I'm 87. And it makes a big difference. And God is good to me. Yes. And I think about Reen. Reen was the kind of person she never said she hurt. If she asked her sister, asked her something, she might say, uh-huh, I might not feel good. But you know, to look at her, the later out of the years that she did, and the kind of life she lived, she never complained, she never gave nobody no hard time. Who can say that? We complain, live and walk around here every day. I got egg, I got this, and I got that. But you know, God is good. I take myself, I've had several operations, and I haven't had a minute's pain because, number one, who you belong to makes a big difference. Reen belonged to God. She obeyed the gospel back then. She became a child of God, and I tell anybody they'd be worrying about things. I said, just leave it to the Lord. He takes care of it all. He owns it all, like the virus. He's in charge of that. God is in charge. And I thank my daughter, and I look why I wonder why my husband picked this. But I know now, and I think all of you all know too, she's a person that takes care of everybody. She's loving. And her sister, I guess she said, I'll give you a rest, Des, because she was going to be there. She loved her sister more than her mama could because mama, I don't think, would have been there as much as Des was. And, and, and I look at Sister Nolan. Des is a person, her daughter, she look at mama, and I love them all. And I look at my daughter-in-law and Roche, I think it wasn't hardly a week past that when they could go to that nursing home, they was there two or three times a week there supporting Sister Norton. And I like to say, believing in God and trusting in God makes all the difference in the world. Today, I'm not sad because she is asleep, and she will wake up. And I want you to remember, you're going to wake up one of these days, but what shape are you going to be in? Think about Reen. She obeyed the gospel and she was faithful. We can do the same thing. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Banks. Next, we're going to have remarks by Sister Roche. We're going to have Keisha, Keisha Taylor, and Brother Oates in that order. So you can come up as your name was called. First, Sister Roche, Keisha Taylor, and Brother Oates.
the opportunity to speak to the family. Continue trusting God. Take one day at a time and take comfort in joy. Bring him as a child to God so she's all right. We had opportunities to go visit for rain a lot. And when we were cold, when we were get ready to leave, we would always ask, when y'all coming back, bring me a baby roof. <laughs> so we would always take a baby roof with us. And when we got there, we would look at us and say, did y'all bring the baby roof? And we would say yes. And Ree would light up. She loved that baby roof. But Ree would not greet, greet us. And she knew we had that baby roof. And I would like to say, we going to miss Ree. And we love Ree. Thank you. Would you please mute, mute your phones? Cut your phones off, please. It's a little wet. That's cool. That's fine. That's fine. First, giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. I'm here on behalf of the Whitfield family. I've been in this family for 50 years because Auntie Des, she's my godmother, but she's my aunt. And um, it's been, 2020 has been real hard for everybody. I lost my mom in July and I stand here today to tell you, Auntie Des, I know how, what you've been going through. She's been with her mom, me and her sister, since day one, since she got sick. And I never knew the importance of taking care of someone when they're sick until my mom got sick. And I was there every day until the day she passed. And I've been knowing them, like I said, for all my life. And Reen has always been the same person. She's always been that lovable person. And like Sister Banks, she never complained, never complained. And I think since I've been gone, because I've been gone a while, every time I talk to Auntie Des, she says something about her. And when my mom passed, Auntie Des was there for me. She was in Chicago, but she was there for me. And I was in Alabama. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And also, I got a text from somebody. Um, I didn't know, I couldn't put the name with the person. And every day since that day, I've gotten a text from her that's very encouraging. Ms. Johnson, I, I knew who you were, but I didn't, couldn't put the name. But um, before I sit down, I just want to say this poem that's befitting of Ring. In our hearts, we thought of you today, but that is nothing new. We thought about you yesterday and days before that too. We think of you in silence. We often speak your name. Now we all have memories and your picture in a frame. Your memory is our keepsake with which we'll never part. God has you in his keeping. We have you in our heart. Thank you.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for the phone ringing. I'm not up to speed on a lot of the latest technologies. So, uh, and I'd like to thank the Lord for all he's done for me and all that he will do for me. And that is not only an honor to worship him, but a pleasure as well. Which uh, brings me to rain, you know. Uh, I would go see her quite often. And, uh, you know, she was always upbeat. And uh, I, I, I thought about, you know, I would read a scripture sometime and she'd say, uh, read that again, you know. So I read it over again. And, and I had an accident a few years ago and I was thinking, man, God, what's up? You know, you know but, uh, but then I think about her and uh, Brother Howard, Sister Allen, Rocher, so many that, you know, remain steadfast with their faith and belief in God, you know, and continue to honor and worship him uh, no matter what, you know. Uh, because I, I had a, a lot of admiration for Brother Dean, you know, but that was from a physical aspect. We, you know, we go to rallies, a town hall meetings together, go drop food off to people, you know, uh, grassroots type of stuff. but. They uh, gave me spiritual inspiration, you know, and it's sort of like that uh, the first Rocky movie, you know, when he says, you, you got to throw the towel in, kids, you know, you're getting beat to death out there, you know. He said, no, nah, I don't care. I'm not throwing the towel in. I'm going all the way with this, you know. So it's like they didn't give up on God no matter what, you know. So, uh, and, you know, when I... When, when I uh, I would take uh, baby roots too, and one day I didn't I didn't bring one, and I just she said, "Where my baby roots at?" You know, <laughs> and I said, uh, uh, "Ren, you know, uh, Des told me I can't bring you no more." She said, "You know, the doctor said you can't have these. You can't keep." She said, "Oh, okay, you know," and uh, but I I I would like I I never got got around a chance to tell her, but I would like what I would like for her to know that uh, uh, I, she, she helped me a lot more than I helped her. Okay. Thank you, Brother Oates, Sister Roche. And Kalisha, thank you so very much for your remarks. At this time, we're going to have a solo by Sister Wendy Severe. Afterwards, the next portion will be, will be our dynamic, wonderful, handsome preacher, oh. Brother Walker. Oh. After oh. 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 <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Apologies for my tardiness. I had to get my, my daughter situated. I always love to do anything for Sister Knowlton, and my heart is with you today, Sister Knowlton and family. Amazing grace, how sweet. The sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I 
mercy. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No from thee no other have I know I can certainly say that I have the cleanest pulpit in the brotherhood. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Donna. Uh, every now and then, someone takes on a task that may not be the most pleasant task, and they, they do it so well that it just fits them. And she's like, you done designated me as the clean. I'm like, no, nah, I didn't do that. You did that. <laughs> if you hadn't done such a good job, we'd be looking for somebody else. But, but we appreciate, appreciate, uh, appreciate her efforts uh, and her willingness. Because uh, all of y'all know some folk, if you ask them to wipe something down, they look at you like you've got two heads. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I, do need to, I do need to remind you of our social distancing efforts. If you're not sitting on a green dot, you're in the wrong place. I see a couple of people have come in and didn't know uh, you need to sit where there's a green sticker uh, on the seat. I will ask one of my ushers to come and help uh, those who need to move because we wanna make sure that we are doing the best that we can to be as safe in this environment, it's, it's foreign to us. We, we're still trying to figure out how to navigate this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And, and we're, we're trying our best efforts and we appreciate all of your cooperation. Um, it's interesting, Brother, Brother Oaks was talking about how he was having difficulty with his uh, technology. I had my lesson all prepared. When I first started, I used to have a piece of paper in front of me. Uh -huh. And then I got acclimated to preaching from my iPad. And I was about to open up my lesson just a few minutes ago. My iPad had died on me. <laughs> just a little spool spinning around and around and around. Like, what is this? I need it right now. <laughs> but. I got my trusty phone here. I don't know, can y'all read that? Uh, it's going to be a challenge, but, but we, know, we know God is still in charge. I, I, I tell you, I, I, I say this all the time. I just, I know funerals are part of life. I know this. I know we didn't come here to stay. I know this. You don't have to convince me. You don't have to prove it to me. I already know that. I got it. Well. I just hate them. Just hate them. Mm. It, it, it's just a stark reminder of our mortality. Well. I want to look at the book of Genesis. Mm. And I also want to give kudos to our mistress of ceremonies she kept things rolling and we would appreciate appreciate all that she has done uh genesis chapter 23 just two verses well from which we'll draw a thought verses one and two you will find these words and sarah 
was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kirjath Arba, the same is Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. We came to mourn and weep for her. I don't know how long Abraham and Sarah were married, but it really doesn't matter. We know that she lived to be 127 years old, but that really didn't matter. We're familiar with the joy she felt after giving birth to a child at age 99, but that really doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to Abraham. What matters to Abraham now is his wife is gone. How long she lived doesn't matter. For the text said he came to mourn and weep for her. We lost one of our sisters in Christ. Many of you lost a relative, a friend, a neighbor. And now we have come to mourn and weep for her. Now, it's an undeniable and unavoidable fact that whenever you lose a loved one, it hurts. It, it, it hurts. I, I know we, we, we've gotten comfortable with saying we're going to celebrate the life, and certainly the life ought to be celebrated. We talk about these gatherings becoming celebrations, and, and that very, that's a very good concept to have, a good approach to bring, but the, re, the stark reality is, out of all of the celebrating we're going to do of her life, it still hurts. It's still painful to know that there'll be nobody on the other end of that phone call. It's still painful to know that you don't have to go see about her anymore. It still doesn't, doesn't feel good, but I need you to remember. I need you to remember the joy of time spent together the memory of a good time and the talks that you, that you would have, the unrestrained laughter, all of that ought to be celebrated. And we believe that because Sister Long was in Christ, that she'd gone to a better place, gone to be with the Lord, and that certainly ought to be celebrated. Amen. But as hard as we try, as much as we read and as sincere the sentiment of others are, I recognize the reality is that death still hurts. And I'm glad that God knew that death was going to hurt us before we encountered it. Because he equipped us to deal with death. He gave us tears to cry when the pain got too much. He gave us shout, anguish, shouts so we can release our anguish when we felt like, like busting out, when we know that we don't have that person in our life anymore. He gave us companions, somebody to lay my head on their shoulder, somebody to hold my hand, somebody to rub my shoulders and pat me on the back and tell me it's going to be all right. God left us something. But more importantly, out of all that he left us, he left us his word. He left us his word to comfort us in times of sadness. Somewhere I read, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Somewhere I read, Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. Yea, saith the Spirit, they shall rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. 
I read precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I read let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Over and over and over and over, God has showed us he left us what we need for these difficult days. And they don't get any easier. They just, they just become more, more debilitating. They just, they just get heavier. It's like, oh, not again. Oh, not another one. Oh, my goodness. It's, 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 just, it's just to the point that we have to do something. Because, see, Satan takes our focus yeah. off of what we ought to be focusing on. Yes, That's his job. Yeah. He takes our minds and, and puts them somewhere else. And when all we feel is our loss. But he failed. He does not let us realize this is an opportunity. Because you know what? Funerals are not for the dead. Funerals are for the living. Rain has already done her job. She already obeyed the gospel and was added to the body of Christ. She's already given herself to Jesus. She's already done her part. I don't know if she even paying attention to what we're doing here now. I don't know. I don't, I, I, I don't have no record. I don't know what she's doing. I know she, she ought to be resting in Abraham's bosom. And I tell you, Sister Diggins, if I was in Abraham's bosom, yeah. I wouldn't care what y'all did. Yeah. <laughs> Put me out in the backyard and go on about your business. I wouldn't. Y'all follow what I'm talking about? Yeah. And I'm trying to bring a little bit of levity because I know y'all know what I'm talking about. But, but, but this, is for, this is an opportunity for the living. From your remarks here, I know she shared special moments with each one of you, and that's why you're here. But I need to ask you, what's on your resume? Did you graduate from school? Did you find a mate? Did you come to Jesus while you had time? Did you get a job? Did you buy a home? Did you raise some children? Did you have your sins washed away in the grave of baptism? What's on your resume? What are folk going to say when your turn comes? Because guess what? Your turn will come. While we cannot escape the pain of the loss, we cannot miss the urgency of this opportunity. She was in Christ. She was baptized. That's a reason to celebrate. We know she's headed for a place of rest. We celebrate when a baby is born, but we know that baby, life going to be full of trouble. And then when our sister left us, we need to celebrate because now we know she's going to a place where she can rest. I like the way the text puts it, where the wicked shall cease from troubling them. And the weary going to be able to rest. We, we have no concept of death. We don't know what it's like. That's why it frightens us. But we've got to believe what the Bible said. We only know what is written. But we do know that there's some things that were written that were written to us. It wasn't written to the dead. It was written to the living. We know that our mortal shall put on immortality. And we know that our corruption shall put on incorruption. We know it's coming. We know that when Jesus returns, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. We know that when that day comes, we're going to be caught up to meet him, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We know what's written. So I encourage you this morning, you need to get ready. Since you know what's coming, you need to get Anybody know when it's coming? Oh, yeah, we know when it's coming. You live in Chicago long enough. You know it's going to be 71 day and 40 the next day and 20 that night. Isn't that right? And so what we do is we get ready. We go in the back of the closet and pull out the heavy stuff. Isn't that right? We put them little lightweight jackets and sweaters. Put them away. It's time to get the heavy artillery out. We know winter is coming. We find our boots and see is it time to buy some new ones. Check the snow shovel. Make sure everything is. Have you got this up? Isn't that right? We get ready. Time for somebody to get ready this morning. Yes, sir. Death is coming. Yes, sir. 
It's coming to your house. It's coming to my house. It's coming to everybody's house. So get ready. Get ready. Because God is not mocked. You ought to get ready. And don't get ready so you can hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Get ready. Because you want to enter into the joy of your Lord. Get ready to get your mansion. Get ready to get your robe. Get ready to get your crown. Get ready to rest from your labors. Get ready to leave this low land of sorrow. Get ready to praise him throughout ceaseless ages. Get ready to stand before the throne. Get ready to see the Savior's face in peace. You got to get ready. God has already showed you he's in control. Just this last eight months, God has showed us he's in control. You ain't in control. You don't control nothing. And every time, every time man thinks this thing has passed, he gets lax, and we get a spike. You don't have to say, man, I know what I'm talking about. See, first of all, Sister John, we don't like to follow rules, no how. We, 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 we so hard-headed. We, we figure rules is for everybody else. So when they tell us to wear masks, I ain't going to be having me no mask. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Even the president is not immune. And I, I, I thank God. I thank God that I'm in Christ because it took all the Jesus in me. Yes, I had to almost step my and Christians don't think like that. Because somebody I know, somebody in here said that's what he get. Yeah. I don't know who it was. But I know somebody in here said it. <laughs> so you have behind the mask now. You can, yeah. But, but Christians don't think like that. But God is showing us you are not in charge of anything. It's time for you to get ready. As I go to my seat, as we call for the funeral directors to come, I'm going to leave you with these words of this song. It says, Careless soul, why will you linger? Wandering far from the fold of God. Hear you not the invitation. Oh, prepare to meet thy God. Careless soul, heed the warning, for your life will soon be gone. Yes, your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad to face the judgment. Unprepared to meet thy God. God bless you.
Closer to my heavenly home.
everything will be alright. Hold on. Hold on. Just a while Hold on. Hold on. Just a little while longer. You hold on. Just before we leave, we're asking those of you that will be accompanying us to the cemetery to please see one of the Fender Directors for a sticker. We're going to line up uh, westbound on Maypole 
Okay, so we're asking that you please receive a sticker and turn on your headlights and your flashers. As we be dismissed, we ask that you uh, uh, please, you can stand and let the family go first. Let us go before the God we serve. Pray with me. Well, heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for what was said and done here this morning. Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, because you have been so good to all of us. Now, asking, Lord, we're asking right now, Lord, you pray for the Notons family and all our friends and loved ones. But, Lord, we know we serve a God, and we, you sit high and look low. We're asking now, Lord, that we, as your people and those of us who are here and heard the message, that we steadfast, unmovable, always working in the work of the Lord, that our labor will not be in vain. Go with us, Lord, each day of our lives as we go forth and understand the goodness of God. And go with this family, Lord, in a time of bereavement that she recognized that there still is a God. He's still alive. And we live and we survive. All this we ask in the name of your son, my Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us all say amen. Bye. Could I please have some of our sisters to come and assist with the flowers? And if you that's young enough to grab a flower, please come up and help us.